Vizhnikovs. Good evening, everyone. My name is Zoe, and I am one of the undergraduate student coordinators for Native American Heritage Month this year. I am especially grateful to be here with you all right now as the Latinx and Native communities come together for the celebration. Before we get started with today's event, I would like to acknowledge the Anishinaabe community and the Three Fires Nation land on which we stand. As Anishinaabe Kwe and a citizen of the Saginaw Chippewa Indian tribe, I find it extremely important to acknowledge Michigan's foundation, our indigenous people. This land shows us how we should take care of it and how it should take care of us. Thank you to my elders and all of my relations for making these events possible. At this time, I would like to invite Assistant Dean at the Rackham Graduate School, school Dr. Ethereum Brammer, to share a welcome message for all of us this evening. Chi miigwech for being here, Dr. Brammer. Miigwech, Zoe, Ani, Buju. If you hear some noise in the background, it's because uh, my wife's family is all here in the house uh, celebrating El Dia de los Muertos and uh, Go Supper as we speak. Um, so if you hear noise, uh, I want to welcome you into our home and our celebration uh, of this time. So, Buju, Ani, Narchuscus, muy buenas tardes a todas y a todos. It's an incredible honor and pleasure to be with you um, this afternoon as we celebrate this year's Ghost Supper and El Dia de los Muertos together as one family across Turtle Island. To begin, I'd like to say Chi Miigwech and Dios Mayam to my sister Zoe Crampton for providing the territorial acknowledgement and welcome. Similarly, I'd like to recognize all of the many people who have collaborated to put together such a robust and intellectually vibrant and engaging celebration of Native American History Month this year. In particular, I'd like to thank all of our amazingly talented young leaders uh, within the Native American Student Association, but especially my sister, Andrea Wilkerson, for uh, her leadership and all of their collective efforts. We applaud your creativity and commitment to the success and continuation of all of these vitally important traditions on our campus and beyond. I'm also grateful to my brother, Sacramento Knox, for honoring us this afternoon with his teachings. My wife and I are happy to be able to count him and his family members among our friends. And I'm thankful for the kindness and mentorship that he personally has always shown to our children and other Native youth throughout the community. So it's a special treat for me and my family to see him engaging with our campus again in this way. As we honor and recognize everyone's efforts to make today's celebration possible, I would also like to acknowledge that 2020 has been a very difficult year and even heartbreaking for some of us, our families and our communities. Native and indigenous communities continue to be disproportionately impacted by the pandemic and government's neglect to respond to health crises in our communities has an especially tragic resonance with the history of genocide on Turtle Island. So if you've lost anyone this year, in your family, in your community, in your circle, I am terribly sorry. And I pray for you, your family, and your community, and uh, your loved ones as you continue to heal from this loss. Indeed, this is what Ghost Supper and El Dia de los Muertos is all about. Our ancestors and their infinite wisdom left us a tradition to be able to always reconnect with those that have moved on in their journey. So they continue to be present in our lives. And so we can continue to learn from their teachings and experience their love. I can't express how happy I am to see our communities celebrate Ghost Supper and El Dia de los Muertos together in a good way. This makes total sense especially given the interconnectedness of our communities across Turtle Island. Like many of our Anishinaabe brothers and sisters who grew up in traditional ways, celebrating Ghost Supper in their youth, some of my fondest and most vivid childhood memories are around El Dia de los Muertos. In fact, something that was common to all of my immediate and extended family members was an altar in everyone's home. But everyone maintained their altares all year round not just on El Dia de los Muertos. It was a way to stay connected with our ancestors throughout the year, to help sustain us on our journeys and remind us of their teachings and their continued presence in our life. I'm reminded of this each time I participate in ceremony with my Anishinaabe brothers and sisters as they pray to the four directions and their ancestors and sing their sacred songs. 
So if we do this throughout the year, why have, why have a special day to celebrate it? For me, this is an explicit reminder from our ancestors to set aside some time, particularly to be present with them. This is a milestone in our path to hold space for time with our ancestors and honoring our traditions. And there are many milestones on our paths. Like Ghost Supper and El Dia de los Muertos, there are also other markers of our shared traditions, ceremonial practices, and interconnectedness across Turtle Island. The monarch butterfly, who begin to take flight here on Anishinaabe land and complete their journeys down in the land of my ancestors, the Purepecha. The Mississippi River that connects the Great Lakes with the Gulf of Mexico and all of the waterways in the southern regions of Turtle Island. The mounds along the Mississippi River and beyond. Monuments left by our ancestors to clearly mark our interconnectedness as a ceremonial family of mound builders. And copper, a sacred cleansing medicine that has been harvested from Anishinaabe lands for centuries and traded throughout the four corners of Turtle Island, including in the South. So as we come together in a good way to celebrate both of these very important interconnected traditions, I couldn't be more pleased that we're doing so uh, in a way that honors all of our ancestors throughout Turtle Island and across colonized borders that do not belong to us. Borders that we did not cross, but that crossed our ancestors. And with that, I'd like to say chimigwech, Dios mayam, y muchísimas gracias to all of you for being a part of this circle this afternoon as we collectively celebrate our shared traditions and all of our relations. Aho, minwa, miigwech. Thank you so much, Dr. Bremer, for your words and for just being here with us tonight. So good evening, everyone. My name is Jimena Mancilla, and I am the undergraduate student coordinator for Lionx Heritage Month this year. So I'm so glad to be here with all of you as the Lionx and Native American Heritage Month communities come together to learn and share about Autumn Ghost Supper and Dia de los Muertos traditions. We would like to acknowledge and thank the Michigan catering and dining teams for their support in preparing delicious meals for this occasion. We hope those of you that were able to pick one up enjoyed it and we cannot wait until we're all able to gather in person again and share a meal together. And by the looks of the special meals that everyone has shared in the chat box, we could have an awesome dinner together. I now have the distinct honor of introducing our future speaker for this evening. Sacramento Knox is an Ojibwe and Chicano media, media artist, MC, music producer, and community cultural worker. As a prominent interdisciplinary artist from Southwest Detroit, Knox brings audiences of a blend of visual art and a performance that inspires, educates, motivates, and engages youths and elders alike in communities of color. His work is creative, expression of identity, love, and healing that challenges and confronts social ills. Please join me in welcoming Sacramento Knox. Hey. Oops. What up, though? Is that? <laughs> what up? How's everyone doing tonight? Um, so I'd like to say, Bujuani Gichimana too. It's Kote and Nene and Dijna Kaz because we're on Gedonjaba, Mewa, while we out to Nanga Donjaba, Anishinaabe and Dao, or Dao and Dao, while the Wadami and Dao, or Jibwe and Dao, Shawnee and Dao, Animiki Benese Dodam, Mewa G Jack Dodam, Chimigwich Mishomish, Chimigwich Nokomis, Chimigwich Wabanong, Jawanong, Ningabiadnong, Giwadnong, Aki, Gijik, Gizagi Mishkiki Win. Uh, um, so basically what I said was hi. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I just want to say, uh, I would say that's uh, Anishinaabe Moan language. So uh, I've been practicing that a lot and introduced my way in a traditional way, the ways uh, the, like uh, from the heart, the, the Mede way, like from, you know, from the heart and that medicine and stuff. So I just, uh, uh, the spirits know me as Ishkote. Uh, the hood and community call me Knox, but uh, my uh, my native name is Ishkote. Um, and um, Thunderbird Clan, 
I'm from Walpole Island, um, Crane Clan, and uh, and then I'm in uh, Detroit. And what else did I say? Oh, and I was just thinking all the directions, uh, east, south, uh, west, and north. I was thinking the grandmothers and the grandfathers, um, and I was giving love and appreciation towards um, the medicines we use, like tobacco, sweet grass, cedar, sage, and the million other ones that are there. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, just honoring that and, and, and introducing to creation who I am in that, in that language. Uh, some elders told me and relatives told me that uh, that's the language the birds and the, and the trees speak and the plants speak around this area. Uh, just like if you're in a different area of Turtle Island, whether it's way up north in Canada or way deep south in Mexico, like it's all different languages that um, function with the land there. Like I, ca I call it ancestral technology, so um, it, it works in that way. Uh, so um, I was going to share a couple pieces here tonight. Um, let's see. Um, I would say uh, I'll share uh, uh, some some media around Dia de los Muertos. I want to uh, introduce Ophelia. Uh, Ophelia, we worked together on this project um, called Spirit Plate. And what Spirit Plate is, uh, it's honoring this time, uh, but it's also honoring the connections that I am as a you know, Chicano, uh, Anishinaabe person, and it's honoring those, those, uh, those uh, really, I'll say ancestral technology, it's honoring those ancestral technology of both uh, the relations and people I'm a part of. And um, that's, that's like the, the essence of my work, you know, like um, a lot of the times people see native people in the past, or it's, we always say traditional, but uh, I'm just like, I like to say that this is now and forever and what's happening now is gonna be traditional in the future. <laughs> so it's like the way that these stories get told or, or, or way, you know, the ways they come, you know, it just, um, it's, it's all sacred, it's all beautiful. And it's like the essence of my work, like to wrap that, uh, that identity, that, that, that essence, that, that genuineness, that, uh, that vibe, that, that swag, <laughs> that, that, that aura, all, all those things that tie into their, um, I also have a relative with me tonight, Tola. Um, so uh, just repping some of, some of that uh, medicine. And um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I have I do uh, a variety of things. It's it's mostly music, but as I grow and transform, like the music and film, both like evolved and transformed. So I found ways of like, oh, I'm scoring my movies live through music, or it's like my con my music concerts look like uh movie premieres or like you know film screenings and stuff so i like to really be in those modes because the storytelling is like a crucial piece of what's being happened what's being said and what's happening with things so like uh uh the piece uh one, one piece is like uh the the storytelling aspect that comes inside that because a lot of my work was hip-hop based and things but uh as it grows it's like uh it's like i'm not really in that uh uh, mm, I'll call it a maybe boundary or just kind of box maybe, but bo boxes are fine. You know, like you got to hit that ballot box on Tuesday. <laughs> so um, uh, this, this, yeah. So the primary, my work came from hip hop and because it's like, I'm an indigenous person with a black experience. I'm born and raised in Detroit. So it's the biggest black city on Turtle Island. So a lot of my, uh, my essence is, uh, uh, evolved in that or like uh, uh, working with that. So part of indigenous sovereignty is also black liberation. Like they work on hand as you can see that the elders always come through and teaching and work together on different block projects, like just around the block to citywide projects to national things he's working with in film and stuff like that. So um, yeah, just kind of a quick gist of things. Uh, we'll get right into the media and I'll share pieces of spirit play um, that hopefully in the future we can all gather and watch it in its full form and just smell the medicines burning and see the big screen and see the words and the colors and the dancing and the, the frequencies and all that stuff. Uh, all, all the sacred sounds that's happening inside there. So uh, let's see what we're gonna start with. Um, I'll share this piece real quick. Uh, it's, it's in one of my video editors. So uh, forgive me if it la like lags a slightly bit, but it should be okay. I'm gonna share that and then um, that's like an opening piece and we'll jump into spirit plate. This piece, what I'm doing is kind of just like a, a appetizer of the work that we're gonna get into. All right, let's share screen here. Mm -mm -mm.
This style is infinity. Cursed with the empathy. Gotta keep it moving, seven generation recipes. Never turn my back on my destiny. We just the God vessel, flexing all these spirit muscles, cracking all these colony puzzles. It's a small world with big trouble. So stay humble and be ready to rumble. In that concrete jungle, the move is in the struggle. The dancer's strategies emerging in the depths of the culture, working. Get connected in and the sage will start burning. We've been moving. Welcome back. Welcome back for a second. Um, that, that, yeah, that first piece is called We've Been Moving. And uh, the second piece is called While We Out Tonight Strong. So it's just kind of dancing in the city and it's in some community spaces we work in uh, at the Alley Project. So uh, do a lot of programming and, and work with like murals and music and, and good work inside software. So I don't need to open the keys. Um, let's see. This next one. I'm gonna share this next one with y'all. This ofrenda. Uh, let's see. So hi everybody. Buenas tardes. Um, hola. My name is Ofelia, and I'm a community organizer and advocate. 
And I'm, I'm also part of Ballet Folklorico Moyocoy and Isel. We're a Mexican uh, folk dance group. You've probably seen us around in the neighborhood. Um, I'd like to say we're kind of Detroit famous, you know, Southwest famous there. So I'm here today to talk to you about the importance of an ofrenda and Dia de los Muertos and what it means and why we celebrate it and like, you know, what it, ha what it was and what it became to be. So we all know that uh, if, you're, if you're Mexican or a part of Central or South America and North America, we're all part of indigenous people. So this tradition comes back from times of the Aztecs and the Mayans. Uh, they celebrated uh, Day of the Dead or they would honor their, their dead. So our indigenous ancestors weren't afraid of death. They, they embraced death. They kind of laughed at death as well because they knew it was a new step. So during the first harvest moon, which is usually at the end of August, they would honor and celebrate their warriors who have passed in, in wars, mothers who have passed during childbirth and children as well, who had left before their time. Once we were, uh, once the Spanish conquest, once the Spanish had conquered and brought their Christianity and Catholic views and beliefs, uh, they moved the de los Muertos, the of, um, of honoring to combine with All Saints Day and All Souls Day, which is November 1st and 2nd. This is why now and nowadays we celebrate it during that time. So it's not Mexican Halloween. It is right after Halloween, but it's not Mexican Halloween. It's a day of honoring and celebrating our loved ones who have passed before us. If you have loved ones and you want to remember them and honor them, this is a great way to do it. So um, we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about a little bit of what's on the ofrenda and what they mean and so what you should have for your friend if you like to to have one so on my first uh level my friend on the floor here i have uh we want to have a representation of a dog so the cholo squinkle is el perro de mexico it's like mexico's uh, uh traditional dog and the aztecs and the mayans believe that this dog would bring their ancestors from the underworld to to the to the living world so that they could visit their families. So I also have representation of like uh, marigold petals, which is to lead away. So on your friend, you're gonna want to have this to leave the path to your ofrenda. Here I am burning some sage. You can have copal as well. Copal is to clean the air, um, and the bad vibes or any mad, bad spirits that might be around to, to purify the area. Also on a lot of ofrendas, they might have uh, food or drink uh, I don't have at the moment, but if you knew what your grandfather's favorite thing to eat was or what their favorite drink, you would also put that in ofrenda. I have an empty bottle of tequila that represents a bottle that I had drank when a certain one of my friends had passed away. I personally don't put uh, alcohol on my ofrenda. Two of my people who are on my ofrenda were um, killed due to uh, drunk driving. So those are just like little personal things that depend on how you feel with your ofrenda too, right? So that's what I have on my first level. So here on my second level, we have uh, photos and candles. And then here I have three sugar skulls that represent the Holy Trinity. Something interesting about the sugar skulls that they were not painted like this before. So everything that you see of like a sugar skull or calavera for Dia de los Muertos, that was an Italian, uh, Italian influence. When the Italians came and settled in Mexico, they started to decorate the skulls during those, uh, the festivities. So these skulls represent, like I said, the Holy uh, Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is also something that was brought uh, during the Spaniard, um, Spaniard conquest with Catholicism and Christianity. So here, candles represent uh, one of the elements of fire, and they, are, they also light the path to your ofrenda so that your ancestors will come and will be able to find the path. Here I have uh, a glass of water for your ancestors, for my ancestors and loved ones. Uh, it is, represents that they have something to drink because they're, they're thirsty, and it's also to purify um, their soul when they come to visit your ofrenda. And then I have a little plate of salt which represents earth and it also is to purify uh, their soul. I have a candle with um, San Judas. You would like to have a candle or like an image of a saint or, you know, un, un Virgen de Maria or un Cristo on your friend as well, if you like. Okay, so then at my next, next level of my ofrenda, you see I have some toys. I have some teddy bears that represent children. It's for the children to play. So if you have children, in your life who had passed away uh, to honor them, you could leave with some toys, maybe a toy they liked or 
a toy for them and maybe some candy as well. Here I have my Jaguar, which is part of um, um, Alebrijes, which were believed to be like the spirit guide animals as well for in the underworld for our ancestors. So I have a presentation of um, an Alebrije. I also have um, some friends, a friend there, and then I have um, some famous figures, which you can also put on your friend if you like to. I'm an activist, so I have Cesar Chavez on my ofrenda, which was, he was a very mix, um, powerful and influenceable uh, Mexican-American activist back in the 1950s. And a lot of people know about Cesar Chavez, so I have him on my ofrenda. I also have uh, Selena, which was a Mexican-American singer, which everybody should know about Selena. Uh, beautiful music, uh, part of my childhood. And then I also have an image of like Juan Gabriel, which I grew up with him and was one of my mother's favorite artists. And he was a big influence in our Mexican um, culture, you know, and in Mexico, Mexican music. Then on my next level here, I have some family members, uh, some grandparents and some aunts and uncles. I also have three calaveras, uh, which represent birth, life and death. So it's important to have these representations on your ofrenda because this is what we're, you know, we're remembering, we're honoring their life. They were born, they lived, and they have passed on, to, they're on to the next uh, world. It's important to have them across, crisscross from each other on your ofrenda, the sugar skulls and the three skulls that represent life, uh, birth, life, and, and death. And then on my very top, I do have another calavera there and some candles and an image of my grandparents with the rosary. So um, this is a part of our Catholicism influence is to have you know, religious articles on our ofrenda. So a rosary is part of the ofrenda as well. Um, we have papel chino, which represents air, which gives the colorful, you, we see this around a lot in um, festivities, Mexican festivities, and it's for the ofrenda, but it represents air as well. We have flowers in the ofrenda too. Mine are on the floor, but if your ofrenda is bigger, or if you have a, a table and you have your flowers on there, it's to um, make the, the, the sweet smell of flowers will bring your ancestors too. So we have um, roses and we have some marigolds. And my backdrop for my ofrenda, um, usually ofrendas are in a graveyard in Mexico. They celebrate a lot in, in the cemeteries. So you'll see loads of candles and a lot of flowers, uh, but since ours is in the house, I have a backdrop. Um, some other places might see this and so, to give it some color, to make it look more lively, no? Uh, but the interesting things about the colors for the de los Muertos on my, on my backdrop, uh, the colors yellow, purple, and orange have a meaning as well. So if you see a lot of these, this color represented during the de los Muertos, so yellow represents life, uh, purple represents death, and orange represents them both crossing each other. So that's why I like uh, my backdrop as well. And we also have marigolds on the backdrop. And at the very top um, for here, because I have my Virgencita Nawa, an image of you know, the Virgin Mary or Un Cristo or one of your saints, uh, preferably. And like I said, that's another thing that was influenced from the Spanish conquest with Catholicism and with Christianity. So in a nutshell, because we are mixed and um, we have a lot of influences, this is not nowadays Dia de los Muertos, uh, un altar. So it's a mix of our indigenous roots and beliefs and then with our Spanish and uh, Catholic and Christian uh, influence to our ofrenda. So this is my ofrenda. You know, you can make an ofrenda at home. Uh, Dia de los Muertos is November 1st and 2nd. You can make it prior. Uh, a lot of people sometimes have their ofrenda in a space all year round. So it's something also if you want to have, remember, you know, our loved ones all year round, not just one day, but it's believed that and this, this, and during these days, they are allowed to come from the underworld to come visit the living family. So this is why we celebrate it more in, in uh, November 1st and 2nd. So yeah, so this is my ofrenda. I hope everybody, you enjoyed it. And hopefully you'll be able to represent or, you know, make your own ofrenda to honor your past loved ones and friends and people who have inspired you. So,
Benakwe. Nana Bojo. Ani Gichi Manitou. Wabanong. Supplies light and starts the sun on the daily journey over the sky. Jawanong. Supplies warmth, heat, and the refreshing. Benakwe. Nana Bojo. Ani Gichi Manitou. Wabanong. Supplies light and starts the sun on the daily journey over the sky. Jawanong. Supplies warmth, heat, and the refreshing dews that cause the growth of the soothing tobacco plant. Ningabianong. Supplies cooling and life giving showers. Iwenong. Supplies snow and ice to help seek places of concealment, hibernation, and rest before reawakening. Odaman. Emerges in creation. Ode means heart in Anishinaabe Moan, and then her name explains the connections to their emotions. Odaman got sick and died, and in death they traveled west to where it's more beautiful than the sunset. When Odaman got to that river that they would have to cross to the other side, the spirits asked them, Why are you grieving, Odaman? Odaman answered, Because my people are dying. The spirits told Odaman that they were to return to the people. Odaman has to let them know that a beautiful teacher was coming to teach them about Mino Benazwin, the good life. This teacher would bring to the people their rituals and ceremonies to help them get over the hills of sickness in their lives. This teacher is called Nanabojo. Nanabojo, I need Gichimanatu. In the stories told, it is said that after he helped name the animals and plants, he left. But because he was also a trickster, he said he would come back and return to the people. But he would not say what he would look like. No one would know. Is not a bojo going to look like you, like me, like a bird? Do you have these gifts? Are you not a bojo returned? He said he wouldn't know what he was going to look like. The story stayed with the people for generations and generations, and now a question and greeting was created. Gin and na, Nana Bojo. Miigwech. Kih Gamijong, Miigwech Mijim Gamijong, Miigwech Banashuk Ngamwad, Miigwech Kishemnado Kinagago Gamijong, Mi Il Miigwech. There is no kind that's out
Nana Bojo was like, okay, bye. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, so that, that was the beginning. That was the beginning of a, the spirit plate, like the, the project and how it goes. And you can see from the pieces of media as I show, like it's an installation. So uh, when we when we initiated Spirit Plate last year, it was this uh, this combination of ancestral te technology uh, through like natives in the South and natives around here in the Great Lakes. So um, we honored that. And coming from like Southwest Detroit and the mixture of cultures is just like providing like immersive space and storytelling uh, to give access and free access to community and to like pretty much just like uh, high quality arts in the in the neighborhood, um, and it was a seven day program. <clears throat> like, kind of thing about it is like seven days of like ceremony or sacred days of being, you know, like creation. And uh, the first three days uh, was like I would say like more heavy uh, programming, and the days following that were open studios within different community centers around the neighborhood, uh, specifically Southwest Detroit. Uh, and we celebrated, um, oh, I'll just show these flyers so you can see what I'm saying. Um, let's see. So, uh, where are you Okay, so this one, this one was one of the first days we had. It was like to honor the, home, the young homies, the little homies, the little people, the, the children. And you can see we had the, um, the video installation, which we had Ophelia's video playing in the loop. And we had a, a, a friend of there in front of her so folks can kind of learn and get in depth of what she was saying. And it was very similar to hers. And it was installed in a community center at the Garaje, which is on Livernois and Southwest. Um, and with the Chilean homie, shout out Meli. And um, we set it up there. And then we have like, uh, like interactive music making and candy. I work with this uh, uh, global organization called Young Cultural Innovators. And we was able to grab uh, chocolates and sweets and candies from all over the world to bring it right to the hood in Southwest Detroit. So I know everybody goes to the suburbs and get this candy in the hood, but like we kept, we brought all the candy from around the world to the hood last year and it was pretty beautiful. Um, let's see. And then uh, the next day we had, uh, for Dear Little Smartos, we had honor songs. And with the honor songs, it was, it was a way for community to uh, grieve or share, you know, just like, oh, my, my, my person that transitioned or has passed away no longer with us, this was the song that they loved or a song that they could perform or something new or brand new. So we we, hope we held space at the Alley Project to um, uplift like uh, songs and, and stories together in that way. And this was really beautiful because um, a lot of times with open mic, you, people have to assume you have to have some type of poetry skill or rapping skill or singing skill or something on the mic. And this one was an opportunity just to, at the bare minimum, to play a YouTube clip or a YouTube uh, piece of music for what you're, ha what you're doing and things. So this was a, a unique open mic um, uh, in ways that was like uh, honoring uh, Dia de los Muertos and uh, honoring our folks through music and sound since a lot of our spirit play is very musically uh, in depth and moving around that way. Um, and then we had the, uh, the Spirit Plate uh, Ghost Supper. This was the concert last year. Uh, we, we feasted and we had uh, monomen and we had venison and like their tacos. And uh, we had a concert. We, had, we installed uh, a huge screen and sound system inside a community center at the Detroit Hispanic Development Corporations. It was one of the uh, very first places I went as like a youth and then like you know, uh, growing up and working with them and being consistent, you know, consistent in like uh, youth leadership and giving back and did uh, like uh, gang prevention work and like healthy alternative lifestyle. And a lot of it was that was through music. So it just felt fitting to go to a place where a lot of this stuff uh, formed and shaped for me inside the community center and help give back with the youth and community members. So it was a free concert. We did it right in the community center. And if you've been to DHCC, you know, there's a uh, a, a super amazing warehouse there with uh, graffiti and, and new murals that are amazing. So we activated that space. We, we ate some food uh, and we went through those teachings of the songs and we gifted everybody spirit place, which is the birch bark. And um, that birch bark is, is used to help feast our relatives and our, our ancestors in that way. Um, as you can see on here, uh, this one doesn't have too much birch. It's the cedar. Uh, we got the medicines here, cedar, tobacco, sage, and sweet grass. Um, in our wooden spoon and copper cup, the feast bundle. So it's like, this is like the artistic flyer for that. So we wanted to uh, kind of reveal that what the spirit plate was and it was a birch bark 
uh, last year. And we continue to do that uh, here today too. Uh, yesterday we had a moon ceremony that my, my mother and sister led and uh, I gifted people spirit plates and people brought tobacco and shared medicine and cedar. Uh, and we, we had deer tacos last night. <laughs> We're gonna have them again tonight too. And um, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful time uh, to kind of uh, look for because you know, we're in this certain political climate and, and, and catastrophe that, you know, uh, it brings a lot of stress and, and uncertainty and confusion and harm and, and a lot of things is happening with that. So uh, to, ha to have a ceremony uh, and be, be in that way yesterday was, was beautiful. Um, and then the snow came today. <laughs> it's so funny, Andrea said that earlier. It's like the snow came again today. <laughs> um, and I can show some of these photos, a little bit of them. Uh, this is some from day one. To mention the mighty children. Yeah, so that, that was day one in the installation process. Um, here's more of the uh, honor songs. So what we did with the honor songs, we uh, we held a podcast before that. I'm sorry I left that out. We, we worked with Gabriela Santiago Romero. She's a, a leader in Southwest Detroit. Uh, she does a lot of good political organizing work. And we were talking, you know, like when we look at leadership, it's, it's all, we always like to, you know, I don't know, like kind of kind of miss out on the the people that make the leaders you know so that was a conversation and to honor uplift the 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 bond between a mother and a daughter and they had a conversation you can see Ophelia there again helping put on the calavera um, there's Gabby and they had a podcast they were talking with each other as they got to uh build you know explain their bond and like look at uh what it is and the the podcast this episode was called the making of chingonas and that that word means like uh, uh you know like cool tough person a badass so we were talking about how gabby got that way and it's usually it's our mothers and our parents and our community and our environment so she got to explain that and be with her mother and make half a uh, calavera so that, that was a beautiful time uh this this media should be available this winter so you can catch up on that um and then let's see and then day three the concert uh there's little pieces of it in there. It's a friend in the space. Oh, there's a little baby Atreyu. <laughs> uh, this was at DHCC where I mentioned the space. Um, there's more murals in here. Incredible work. Uh, there's DJ Jungle help a hold down sound. And this is some of the spirit plate we, we had available to give away. Um, we had some some gifted from our communities to help, and a lot a lot of a lot of birch bark came. And yeah, so this was that night. It was the evening. We had a feast. We had a ghost supper, and then we had a concert. So people were able to uh, get busy, do their thing. Uh, you know, like enjoy themselves. Uh, build and talk, and then you know we set we set up the the show and. The show is very like spiritual in its form and nature and a lot of like when we perform spirit play, we like to put that ofrenda or altar or a sacred space right there. And our medicines and our people and our loved ones right there. So that piece right there. Um, and this sat, this sat in front of the, the piece. Uh, some of the chefs and the cooks, they're, they're just like uh, giving a shout out for their work and what they did with the, the food that night for spirit play. Uh, let's see. I think it's about it. There's not too much footage. There's no sound on here. Um, yeah, so that, that was the concert. You can see the screen back here. <laughs> Mary Luevanos, great elder in the community. Oops. So, um, yeah, that's a piece. Uh, I'm going to show one more piece. Let me see where this is, footage is at. Uh, We're gonna go. All right, uh, let's see, let's try. Uh, let's see. Hmm. 
This this by my P is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to think with there there are, oh this one is a good one. I'll show this one. Trying to make something out of nothing. Pushing all these buttons, asking all these questions. It's been a long time coming. Trying to make something out of nothing. Pushing all these buttons, asking all these, asking all these questions. It's been a long time coming. Trying to make something out of nothing. Pushing all these buttons, asking all these questions. It's been a long time coming, trying to make something out of nothing. Pushing all these buttons, asking all these, asking all these questions. Thank you. 
We're back. So th those are a lot of the, uh, the pieces in Spirit Plate, um, the concert and, and things. And it's, um, I think the, the beautiful part about the Spirit Plate is uh, this, this, uh, this like this indigenous resurgence of a uh, place and technology. I, I just refer to it as technology because uh, anthropology or, or 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 white institutions like to call this stuff folklore or myths or these things like that. When, if, when in fact they're like powerful things, and um, it's so powerful that you know this place that we're in called the United States of America that's uh, occupying itself here uh, on Turtle Island that. Uh, it was illegal to do what we do as native people up until 1978. So, you know, you're just you're just seeing these things like you're seeing uh, a person like myself being being uh, gifted and, and uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for here? Like uh, honored, you know, like the people that came before me, like uh, Thurman Bear and, and, and Lucy Harrison the, and Angela Reyes, these people that are in my my community that gave so much back and continue to still do so so much and and, and rest rest in peace of Thurman. Um, so it's like those those pieces that uh, came together. It's like you could see, like like you know basically how a person like me exists or do this do this artwork. You know, it's continue to go to the next level of storytelling, to the next level of technology and culture. And I'm sure that all the, the young people I'm influencing and working with now, I'm sure their shit's gonna be way, like, way more better. Not that it's like a competition thing, but like the continue of evolution of place and space and, and culture and arts and, and media that ultimately affect and shape our communities and help us organize, right? It's a story, gives us some narrative to move around and things. And this is a narrative of indigenous resurgence on Turtle Island and also uh, uplifting that, that black liberation piece inside there too. Like these things are tied together as we know that like red land plus black labor equals white gold. So it's like those type of mathematics um, catches us in these systems of oppression. But this this uh, this technology and this event of Spirit Plate uh, is beautiful. You know, it's like just kind of a culmination of, you know, uh, our friendas and our Chicano culture, or, uh, you know, Latinx culture, and then our native culture too, with the, the cedar and the birch and the tobacco the copper cups and the wooden spoons and and the stories and, and the feasts and all, all the beautiful things so um yeah i just kind of uh wrap it up right there i believe uh, i believe i'm right on time with things someone wants a time check or, or check it out but um yeah that, that's that's where we at and i uh, thank you all for sharing in this storytelling mode uh it's really beautiful and i really i really hope get the hope that we can see each other in person uh in a big in in, in the future uh, outside of these conditions that are like containing us and, and, and that's a, that piece for for now uh thank you so much uh knox for sharing all of this um amazing work honestly um Chimi Gwetch for sharing your teachings. We're honored to have your ancestral knowledge and wisdom with us here today. Um, please everyone join me in sharing appreciations in the chat box. So um, now we would like to have some space and time to reflect a little as a group. Even though we are virtual, that doesn't mean that we can't do our best to learn from and share with each other. So please, if you can, take a moment and let's fill up our virtual community space with our thoughts and reflections on all we've learned and experienced together. Um, so you can share it in the chat box if you would like, and if there's something new you've learned or are now interested in learning more about, please share any reflections specifically about in relation to Ghost Supper and De, De Los Muertos traditions. So at the very beginning of our time together, a number of folks shared some special meals and who they were thinking of for this time of year. And while we wait for our reflections to fill in the chat box, I'm going to share a few of those out loud. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the first ones we got was from Emmanuel Orcaso Castellanos. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, they said that their mom always makes mole and ch chocolate 
abuelita and conchas for dessert. And mole is a very time consuming and complex dis dish. So she only makes it in special occasions like Dia de los Muertos. And that was really interesting because it showcases how this is such a big time of year for some people and really want to highlight that. There's another comment from Alejandra Gallegos Ordas who um, writes that during this time of the year, their family makes pozole and tamales, which are made together between the women in the family and they offer warmth during this time of cold. And I thought that that really um, exemplified how these cultural traditions are a way of coming together with our families, with our communities, and basically having a really nice time together. And the last one we want to share is from Marionette Cano. Sorry if we're mispronouncing that. But um, they said that they have some of their deceased family members' favorites, such as lechon, empanadas, champurado, and leche flan. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing those again. <laughs> Um, and honestly, that was really impactful because it kind of reminds of why we set out a plate for our ancestors or those who have passed. It's basically like to honor them and to, I guess that's why we had these traditions in the first place. So thank you all for sharing. Um, in the chat box, we have a reflection from our own Andrea Wilkerson, who says that She's reflecting on how music and sharing favorite songs honor our ancestors. And she thought the honor song event that you shared was very thoughtful and beautiful. So thank you, Andrea. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give you guys <laughs> a little more time because I know that this is kind of hard to think of on the spot, but one of the things that I'm reflecting on is just how we can use these cultural traditions to essentially evolve, not evolve, but like, it's hard to explain, but I like how we can use these cultural traditions to connect to the past and our ancestors while moving forward and embracing other cultural traditions. For me, um, I just think that's a really special and important thing we can do to keep our traditions alive. Mm. Yeah, also, um, I want to, I want to uplift too, like, uh, reflections too, but if the, for the, the homies that are in here, maybe if you just want to, uh, I, I usually do this in, in performance or in the, with the audience, but maybe we can just kind of uh, type type your, your relatives and your ancestors that are, are, are no longer here and just kind of uplift them in the chat box, you know, uh, to be intentional in that space and uh, these dig this digital mana duke. So um, we can kind of, yeah, do that. I just want to encourage that, you know, if you don't have no reflections, but maybe there's somebody that you're thinking about right now that reminds you of things. So just, you know, I, I want to honor that to text. So just. Just sharing that as well too, if you want to uplift anybody too as well. Mm -hmm. Glitch, glitch, glitch. Um, also, too, um, if anybody want to share from the meal, how was that meal that everyone had tonight? And we, how's that? I want to know how that went. <laughs> Yummy meal. <laughs> how was it? How was it? What was the, the best part? You could text it in there, too.
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do you remember what was in the, the meal, Solomon? Uh yeah. In my meal there was a blue cornmeal mush and gee, bison meatballs plus a salad and this like raspberry tart treat. I it was good. I really liked it. Yeah. That's what's up. That sounds amazing. Loving all this engagement in the chat. <laughs> yeah, and if if no one have set up on a friend that today or also or want, would want to practice that, um, you know, I would just say uh, find ways to honor the elements in there, and then of course put your 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 loved ones there, even if it's a name. I don't have pictures of of my loved ones today, but I plan on writing their names. Uh, fortunately, or or you know, it's I, it's it's a long list, so I. I want to kind of spend some time reflecting on that tonight and writing their names down because uh, they've all played very incredible uh, portions personally in my life and also indirectly, right? Like teachers like Malcolm X or or uh, Tecumzi or, you know, like Sister Chavez, people I don't know, but they've affected my life greatly. So, um, you know, just want to throw that out there too. Yeah, absolutely. Just someone said, uh, honor those that's lost, lost their life to COVID, uh, whether they know their names or not. And absolutely. Um, yeah, that's, that's very important to uplift and, and, and bring attention to. See, maybe we can, uh, can I share some? Can I share another piece, piece of music? All right. Boom, boom, boom. All right, let's see. Um, trying to find it. I think it's in here. Let's see. Oops. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Sorry, there's so many files I gotta go through. <laughs> I'm looking for the, the string out we did. All right, here's a, here's a, uh, here's a, it's more, it's more or less a, a, a dance and it, it was over there in Ann Arbor. So I think this is a pretty cool video to show. I uh, just do a uh, teaching real quick or I just share real quick. I carry a scarf in my medicine. This is a uh, sweet grass from where I'm from, uh, Wapple Island. We have some of the longest sweet grass there. It's about six feet. It will grow in August. So when I carry my scarf and then I hear that loud honor beat, we call it the honor beat. And that's, um, I call it the thunder. When I explain to the children how to dance, when you hear that thunder, you put your medicine to the ground and right here, I'm carrying my tobacco. So this would be my prayer.
Watch. Yeah, it's fun stuff. I forgot that was out there. The it was a joke. It was like uh, Ninja. Uh, it was a uh, Ninja Turtle Island or something. <laughs> <laughs> really love that. Um, thank you everyone for just really having thoughtful engagement, and we really hope that all that you've learned and experienced that we've learned together can be carried forward from the space and held throughout the season as we honor our ancestors in these ways. Um, so I guess now that we're towards the end of this, our time together, I would like to invite uh, Sacramento Knox to share any closing thoughts with the group before our last announcements for this evening. Um, yeah, so I, I was thinking about that. I was like, I was joking with Andrea. I was like, to infinity and beyond. <laughs> But um, I was I would say that like uh, I would just offer a song real quick and then just wrap it up. It's like a it's a it's a song. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab my rattle. <laughs> So I guess now would be a good time to plug that if you're looking into the events that we have for NAM, please check up our, on our website for the most up-to-date details for our events. <laughs> uh, Andrea has put it in the chat, so please check it out. <laughs> Got it. The drum machine. <laughs> okay. <clears throat>
song and again miigwech for sharing your knowledge and ceremony with us today please be sure oh no sorry so sorry so sorry there is a survey link being sent out in the chat as well as via email please complete this so we can continue to show the university why events like this are important thanks again for joining us today and thank you again to sacramento knox for sharing your knowledge with us as this is our last event before election day, Tuesday, November 3rd, we just wanted to encourage everyone to exercise your democratic right and make your voice heard by voting. With that, we hope you have a great rest of your week and happy Native American Heritage Month.